Hello everybody. We're going to do uh, a standalone video today called The Sign of Jonah. During my studies I've uh, just stumbled across this idea by uh, reading the book of Jonah and it got me thinking uh, pretty deeply about the book of Jonah. And I remember what Jesus said. We'll look at what Jesus said about Jonah in uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 39 to 41. Uh, Starting in verse 38. And certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall be no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. So, that's what Jesus said about Nineveh. And the Queen of the South was the Queen of Sheba who came to visit Solomon because she heard of his great wisdom, and she praised God because of his great wisdom. Um, so, now, the, I guess what Jesus is getting to is that uh, Jerusalem rejected him and ended up being destroyed. Um, so they didn't do what Nineveh did when Jonah preached. And uh, they didn't do what the Queen of Sheba did. So. Um, they are judged more righteous than Jerusalem. So now, when reading the book of Jonah, it gets very interesting. Because um, Jesus draws a parallel between himself and Jonah. Just as Jonah was in the belly of the fish... For three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man, Jesus, be in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. So there's a parallel, and prophecy is full of parallels. So if we look at jo the book of Jonah and think about parallels to the ministry of Jesus and see what we come up with and see if we can get a deeper understanding of the sign of Jonah. So we were just going to go through the whole book of Jonah. It's, it's, it's not that long. It's only four chapters. And we'll try to do it quickly. And we'll see if we can get through this. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Rise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, uh, some people will say that uh, that Jonah was afraid because of Nineveh and, and uh, 
he was afraid to go to Nineveh because they were so fierce and and uh, cruel. Um, and it's true that they were fierce and cruel, but that's not why Jonah is going and fleeing from the presence of the Lord. Because Jonah gives the reason later on in the book. But um, just a little bit of history about Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. And the Assyrians for, were well known for their cruelty. Um, we do have some um, uh, clay tablets uh, left over from the Assyrians where they brag about their battles and their victories. And they brag about, you know, uh, driving the king, driving his chariot over his enemies, uh, plunging through their guts and blood spraying. And um, they would take uh, a city and behead everybody and pile all the heads up. Uh, they, they, they would do cruel things with the bodies of their victims. Um, they uh, generated fear in the whole region and that was part of their uh, authority and power was that everybody was afraid of them and they had good reason to be. Um, so that, you know, the, 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 the Assyrians were quite well known for their cruelty. Um, but that's not why Jonah was running away. Now Tarshish, um, the best guess is Tarsus, where Paul is from. Um, now that that is going, it's kind of going west instead of east, so it could be fleeing from uh, from Jonah or from the Lord. Um, the the uh, patron god of that city is the storm god, so that's interesting because there's a storm in uh, the book of Jonah, uh, but the truth is is uh, it's really un unknown what where Tarshish was. I think it might have been Tarsus. So Joppa was a it's a it's a it's still a city today called Jofa. Um, it's on the uh, coast just uh, near Tel Aviv there, and it's a port city. And so it has been even in, in Jonah's time. And he went to that city to get a boat and go somewhere other than Ninba. Um and his father, Amitai, is mentioned in the Bible, and he's uh, from the, the tribe of Naphtali, which is a little further north, up, up in, in uh, the region of uh, Tyre, Saddam, in that region. Um, but I, get, I suppose, like, why would he go south from there and go to Jofa. Um, he was probably in Jerusalem, and that's more directly than Jofa is more directly uh, west, straight down to the sea to the port. So, you know, those are all just uh, guesses. So, anyway, Jonah gets on a boat to flee from the presence of the Lord. Okay, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried, Every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said to him, 
What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. So uh, the the all the all the crew of the ship are all uh, panicking and crying unto their gods. Each one or each group in the ship, who is probably multicultural, a trading ship, and people from Egypt, people from Canaan, people from Israel, uh, different parts of the world, all taking this ship to a certain place. Um, so they're each calling on their gods because of the storm. And they said unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and what people are you? And he said to them, I am Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which has made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he told them, because his God is the God of the sea and the dry land, and they're in a storm in the sea. Then said they to him, What shall we do to you that the sea might be calm to us? For the sea churned and was tempestuous. And he said to them, Take me up and cast me into the sea, so shall the sea be calm to you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Um, so, if you think about the ministry of Jesus, okay, cast me into the sea, uh, the tempest is upon Jerusalem, um, because the whole city is stirred up from the preaching of Jesus, and there's division within Jerusalem. So he's saying, cast me into the sea, and the, the, the uh, tempest will stop. Okay. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. They didn't want to throw him overboard. They, they didn't want to kill a man. And so they tried even harder to row ashore, but they couldn't. Therefore they cried to the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, has done as it pleased you. So they took Jonah and threw him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. It went calm. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So this is the parallel. Uh, they, they threw uh, Jesus into the grave, and, and there was calm in Jerusalem for three days and three nights. Uh, he was in the grave. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, out of the belly of the fish. So this is now this prayer is parallel to Jesus in the grave. Okay? I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell, uh, in Hebrew that's shor, which is 
basically it's just the place of the dead. Out of the belly of Shoal I cried, and thou heard my voice. For thou had cast me into the deep in the midst of the sea. So he's saying God cast him into the deep. And the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Uh, the bars, um, in Hebrew, it's sort of the bars of the earth. The bar is like the bar that holds a curtain or a foundation. Um, it basically means I went as deep as the foundations of the earth, the bottom of the ocean. Okay. Yet thou brought up my life from corruption. O Lord my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Um, so he's saying those that uh, follow after vanity um, forsake their own mercy. They uh, um, they are uh, not doing themselves any good. And but I will sacrifice to thee. So those people sacrifice to something else, and they forsake mercy to themselves. They, they will not receive mercy. But I will sacrifice to God, even from this bottom of the, the grave of where I am, the bottom of Sheol. Okay? And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. So this is the resurrection of Jesus. The fish spits him out on dry land. Okay. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid you. So go do what I told you to do before. And Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days journey. Okay, so what is Nineveh after the resurrection of Jesus? What is the great, the exceedingly great city after the resurrection of Je Jesus? What's the parallel of Nineveh? It would have to be Rome. That's the great city that Christianity went to. Rome, okay? So, so far the parallel is making sense. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. So Rome became Christian. They, they, they believed God and, be, and proclaimed a fast. From the <clears throat> and, 
and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? So Rome, Rome did make declarations of uh, the Nicene Creed, for example, the, 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 the Easter, the holiday of Easter. Um, so there is a parallel here. Okay. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he said that he would do to them, and he did, did it not. So, Jerusalem was destroyed. So, that's not the Nineveh. That's not the parallel. But Rome was not destroyed. Uh, Rome prospered. Okay? Uh, for a time, right? And still, like, if you think about it, Rome is still functioning. Um, the global government, the, the Europe, uh, United States, all the Commonwealth countries, their um, uh, society and culture is very much uh, built upon a Roman skeleton. Uh, built upon Roman principles. So in that sense, Rome still lives on. Okay, now chapter 4. See, we're already in the last chapter here. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. So now the parallel, Jonah is Jesus, right? So Jesus is very angry. About what, though? And he prayed to the Lord, and he said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? That is why I fled before to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and great kindness, and repent you of the evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. So Jonah's angry because God forgave Nineveh. Why is Jonah angry because God forgave Nineveh? Because Nineveh is a pagan city. It, it's um, Jonah is a Jew. Jonah is an Israelite. Jonah is following the law of Moses. Nineveh is far, far from that. They're they're worshiping other gods. They 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 have idols. They're they're not doing anything Jewish, not, not even close to what Moses taught. So this is why Jonah is, he's saying, that's why I ran away. I knew you were going to forgive them. I knew it. I didn't want this to happen. Now he's got to tolerate watching these people again. And now they're under God's grace? Like, what the heck? Uh, why? Why is that allowed? 
Uh, what? Why aren't they being destroyed? Because they're wicked, and they, everything they do is against the law of Moses. This is what Joan is saying. Okay. All right. So, therefore, take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to live in this world with these guys being under your grace. Okay. Then the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city and there made a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. So he made a, a booth and sat in the shade and watched. I'm going to wait and see. Because I know what they're going to do. And well, let's see how this works out. Okay. And the Lord God prepared a gourd. And made it come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd. So God grew something up over Jonah to give him relief that made Jonah feel better. So what, what, okay, if Jesus, okay, so Rome becomes a Christian and under God's grace and Jesus is angry about that because uh, you know according to the parallels that we're drawing here with, with Jonah and Jesus so what is the gourd what is the gourd that grows up over Jesus to comfort him and make him feel better so what would comfort him the, the, what would comfort him that would be that the people would be actually listening to his gospel, actually believing his gospel, actually listening to the word of God, and 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 trying to uh, understand it and do it. That would be the pleasing thing. So, what is the gourd? The gourd. I, I think it would be like the Protestant Reformation because that's what came out of the, the um, that's what the Reformation was, was uh, uh, going back to the scriptures to say, well, the Roman Catholic Church, it's based on the seven sacraments. Like it's got very little to do with the scriptures. It's, they, they kind of took it and made traditions out of it and mixed it with Greco-Roman mythology, and it's it's uh, a kind of a mess. It's it's a Syrian Roman crap, right? And so the Protestants were trying to purify, like let's purify this Christian belief system into something more in tune with the Gospels. So to me, that seems like the gourd. The gourd plant that gave him some shelter from the sun and made him feel happy. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd, but God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day and it smote the gourd that it withered. Well, you know, the Reformation. Um, basically became corrupt itself and today generally speaking I would say that you know if you look at the Christian lay of the land it's it's corrupted it, it's not that um, they're not following the Gospels uh, really that closely and um, if you look at the Anglican Church, for example, well, they, they're like, you know, putting, uh, saying women are men and men are women. They're, they're, they're making God a woman. It's, it's like just crazy stuff. Um, and there's a lot of, um, 
you know, it's hard to tell the difference between Catholic and Protestant anymore. It's it's sort of like we, we don't, <clears throat> people don't even know what a Protestant is really. So there still are Protestants which are very much following the gospel, but if we're looking at the Reformation from a greater picture, it is corrupted. Okay. So the gourd withered. And it came to pass when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die. And he said, It's better for me to die than to live. So it all made it again unbearable for Jonah. But when we think of the parallel, okay, again, unbearable for Jesus. There's nobody doing the gospel cleanly, or not many people. The, the world at large is ignorant of the gospel, okay? And God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the gourd? And when he said, I do well to be angry, even to death, then the, said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for which thou hast not labored, neither made it grow, which came up in the night, and it perished in the night. And should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, where are more than six score thousand people that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. So God is saying to Jesus, or to Christianity, um, is my mercy or my grace towards people who are ignorant um, that painful to you? <laughs> <laughs> is it, you know, um, the thing that came up overnight that you never labored for and the thing that died overnight that you didn't do anything for, um, you are so concerned about that, but you're not concerned about my grace towards all these ignorant people. So it's a... It, that's what kind of struck me, you know, studying um, the book of Jonah and trying to draw a parallel uh, between it and, the, and Jesus after the resurrection. So, I don't know, what do you think? Um, is there, am I on the right track or do you have some other thoughts about that? Um, the sign of Jonah. Um, and Nineveh will rise up against Jerusalem in judgment because Nineveh repented and Jerusalem did not. Even though Jerusalem was 100% after Moses, 100% uh, behind Moses, and Nineveh probably didn't even know who Moses was. So, um, interesting stuff, if you take that kind of look at it. Oh, well, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good week.